I spent 10 hours creating this animation over the last week, and here's the result. Oh come Holy on! Holy shit, dude. bro! What the? Stop! <laughs> oh, that is a that's a perfect loop. Alright, that's uh, my vote. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> In this video, I'll show you exactly how I did this, my entire process from start to finish. It won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I break down my storyboarding, animation, and the final production process. I've made all of the project files available on Gumroad. I'll link it in the description below. Feel free to dive in and play around. And if you make something cool with it, just tag me wherever you post it and I'd love to check out your work and share it on. Step 1. Storyboarding Now for me, storyboarding is the most important part of the process. Believe it or not, but even more important than animating itself. Personally, I use Figma. I think it's a very powerful piece of software and it helps me work fast and efficiently. The very first thing I do is I start by creating mood boards. What that essentially means is that I'll draw inspiration from wherever I can find really, then I collect them in this Figma page that I call inspiration. For this one I wanted beautiful gradients, diamonds, gems and some underwater stuff. These are some of the things that I thought captured the essence of the word glint, which was the title of the animation. After that I create this page called style frames. The first thing I do in style frames is usually create a color palette. Now the question I get asked the most is how do I create my color palette? There's a few different ways I create my color palette. A lot of the times I will just directly pick colors from these mood boards that I've created and look at colors that I like, and then I'll just collect them in a frame and see how they work out together. There are also a lot of websites that are linked up here that make this process very easy and they have some really beautiful color palettes. So if you're looking to get a beautiful color palette really quickly, you can just check out the millions of color palettes that these websites have and they'll work out just great. From there on, I go on to creating these style frames. Now this is where your creativity will really come into play. Now creating these style frames is like laying the backbones of your animation. If you create beautiful style frames that just independent frames look good by themselves, your animation is going to turn out beautifully. People are going to watch it over and over again. This is kind of really where I sketch all of my ideas. So for example, I tested out frames like this, all these test frames, some that I've crossed out I didn't really like. I even created 3D models and tried doing something with that, but I just wasn't feeling it, so I crossed it out and stuck to what I liked. Step two, the soundtrack. Now I found this beautiful soundtrack called Bittersweet, and it's by an amazing artist called Punch Deck. I decided to use the soundtrack because I think it fits the theme of the video really well. I think it's very impactful when the animation is synced with what's going on in the soundtrack. And one way I do that is I create these markers, which you can do by pressing this button here. I create these markers when I see that there's a bump in the audio level. For a lot of soundtracks, this will mean that there is a strong beat on that frame. So I put a marker there and I continue the process for the rest of the frames. Step 3. The animation. This is what you're really here for. Now everything I do here is just my own way of doing this. There are a billion other better and more efficient ways of doing this. This is just how I like it. With that out of the way, let's look at the scene. And don't be intimidated by all these layers, I'll help you break it down by looking at each scene one by one. Scene 1 is really made with two shapes with a bunch of blurred shapes set matted onto them. What a set mat does is it only shows a shape layer when it's within a larger shape. There is a shape from the pink part that's supposed to be a zoomed in diamond. This has a path animation which makes it look like it's rotating. The way I created these glows is by making a lot of shape layers, putting a fast box blur and then set matting them to the body of the diamond. Then I just animated their position to make it look like the lighting on the diamond is moving. The transition from this scene to the next is called a match cut. Ben Marriott has a great tutorial for match cuts in detail so go check that out. Scene 2 is kind of the same, the body of the diamond is rotating with a bunch of glows set matched to the face of the diamond. These bigger white glows just have a path animation to make it look like they're going from top to bottom. Now, scene 3 looks a bit spicy, there's a faux 3D diamond in here. This looks complicated but it was really easy and super fun to do. All I did was create this diamond and animated each face's path to make it look like it's rotating. It's actually not, you just think it is. Again there are shape layers on each of these faces for the glows. Then the planets here are just a bunch of large circles with blurs on them. 
They go from bright to dark to show that the gem is lighting it up. The entire scene is tied to a knoll that rotates the entire scene. This helps carry forward the rotation from the previous scene to the next. Scene 4 is all 2D as well. Each of these gems have different faces. Then all of these are tied to a null so I can move the entire gem by just animating one position property. These have separate shape layers set matched to them for the reactive lighting. How this is done is by animating the position of these glows when the glowing ball comes in. This helps sell the fact that the ball is lighting all these stones. There are some background gradient shapes that expand as the ball comes in. They have some blur on them so that they blend in pretty well. Now this next scene is also all 2D, including this cube. This technique is really easy and there are a bunch of tutorials on YouTube out for it, but all this is is six faces of a cube, all on their own pre-comps, rotated in 3D space and After Effects. So you rotate and then position each face so it forms a cube. Then each face has its own pre-comp with gradients and glows. Then all of these faces are tied to a null so I can control all the faces as if it were just one singular cube. Then I added this camera to get rid of any perspective that might be on the cube. Now this is a basic photography technique where you place the camera far away from the object and instead zoom in to get rid of any perspective distortion. So the position is minus 60,000 on the z-axis and then it's zoomed way in to get rid of the perspective. This entire cube is on a pre-comp and then is rotated to go into the next scene. Now this scene is super easy, believe me when I say that, and it looks so delicious. What I did was create all these triangles, add a glows onto them individually like I've been doing before. And then I used this script called Create Nulls from Paths, and it comes with After Effects itself. I've created this new composition to show you just how easy peasy this is. The comp has two triangles, and all you do is just select them and then run this script. Then you have a null for all of the points of the shape. Then you delete all of them except the middle ones. Then you just animate the position of these, and boom, you have your scene. This next scene just plays with the valley shape created by the previous scene and introduces a ball rolling from the right. Now with this scene you can really see how much you can get away with in motion design because this is only on the screen for a few seconds and nobody's going to notice it. Now this ball has its own set of glows and has a star glow. This glow is just a simple star shape. The position is animated to keep the star onto the ball. The scale and the rotation are also animated to show that the glow comes in and fades away as the lighting on the ball changes. There is also some reflection on the surface below. This helps sell the idea that the ball is really glowing and reflecting onto the surface below. Next scene is a bunch of circles moving along with the ball along the perimeter of the outer circle. Now I did this manually, there must be better ways of doing this, but I just animated the position of these circles manually. There is another star glow on this ball. There is also an outer circle that is blurred for the overall glow. This scene match cuts into the next scene where the two circles are coming together. Here the two circles are connected to a null, so I rotate both of these by just animating one property. Both of these circles have a position animation to make it look like they're coming together. Then these two start intersecting and a new circle emerges. This was done by using a luma mat. What this does is it shows the intersection of the two circle shapes. And then there are a bunch of glows that are parented to the nulls that have different speeds of rotation. These different rotations help make the gradients more dynamic. So if you see, some of these are going to rotate faster and some of these are going to rotate slower. This scene now, it took me a while to get it right. So for the waves, I created a triangle shape. I put it in a pre-comp and then I added wave warp. I changed the direction to 180 degrees and then I pinned it onto the top. So the waves come from the top and move towards the bottom. Then I added a mirror to it so the waves are the same on either side. Then I duplicated this wave a couple of times and changed the color and layered them. Then I added these shapes that have a basic repeater on them and then the position is animated so that they keep repeating. Back in the main comp, there are also these spheres that help create more interest in the scene. Then I added an overall glow using an adjustment layer and adding deep glow onto it. An adjustment layer helps me apply this glow to everything below. So instead of adding it individually to everything below, I just added it to this layer. This scene is probably the simplest, with just a main sphere with position animation and a bunch of supporting spheres with blur on them. Now this scene has a trim path animation to it to make it look like the circle is being completed. You can do this by going into the content, then add, then trim paths. Now instead of adding a simple gradient to the shape, I used shapes to have final control over the gradient. And then I just set matted onto them to this path. Then there's this floor with the spheres coming in from the right for some secondary motion. And this coin starts coming in within the stroke. This is all done in After Effects. This coin is basically done using a Cinema 4D renderer here. 
I just added some extrusion onto a shape and then put a gradient onto it as an alpha mat. One gradient is for the faces and the other is for the sides. These gradients are on their own pre-comp where a bunch of shapes are animated randomly to create a moving gradient. This coin also has a camera to get rid of the perspective using the same trick I used for the cube. I placed it far away and zoomed way in. Then this entire coin is rotated to make it flip. This next scene was all about selling the illusion of a ball falling downwards at a very high speed. So there are all these shape layers that are going upwards to make the ball look like it's falling. They're all tied to a null, which is just making them move upwards. Then there is a path animation for this trail of the ball. A gradient is set matched to this trail. The gradient is rotating upwards as well. The way I did this was by adding colorama and animating the phase shift. This will make the gradient roll. Then I added a CC toner to just fine tune the colors that were coming out of colorama. There are also these line thingies that make it look like it's going ultra fast. For this, I used CC Particle World. I just changed the shape of the particles, made the gravity negative so it goes up instead of down, and added some directional blur to it. Now this next scene is probably my favorite scene in the entire animation. This is where the sphere falls into the ocean. The waves here are done using the same technique as the butterfly scene. I added a wave warp and added a mirror so it looks like the impact was in the center. Then I duplicated the wave a few times and created a color or added some stroke. Then I changed the phase on the wave warp so that it's slightly off time to give the water a depth effect. Then I added these pieces of rocks. These rocks move up with the water. Two of these have a glow set matted onto them. You can't see them right now because they're not overlapping the shape, but their position is animated so they overlap when the ball hits them. Then all of these have a directional blur which helps sell the illusion of speed when the rocks go up, transition into the underwater scene. Now this scene is really more about good illustration than it is about animation. There's really not much animation going on here, just the ball sinking down and going into the treasure chest. The way this was done was the faces of the chest box are on different layers. The front face is above the ball so it looks like the ball goes inside the chest. Also there's this coral animation. These are just wavy paths that have two separate wave warps on them. There are also some subtle lighting animations on the rock for some responsive lighting as the ball comes closer. Now for the last scene, I changed the color of this layer and used the wave warp to show the water level. Then this layer with the type that appears from behind the water was done using a mask. The position of the mask was animated according to the level of the water. There's also a reflection of this text. This reflection has a turbulent displace to make it wavy the position of this is animated to make it float downwards. This also has a bezier warp to give it a perspective distortion. Then I added some star glow and some lens flares that are just shape layers with some opacity and shape animations. Now this entire scene rotates to make it a perfect loop and the animation starts again. Step four, post-production. The first thing I didn't post was I added some grain to the overall animation. This was done by adding a solid into a pre-comp then adding noise to it. Then in the main comp, I changed the blending mode for this to soft light and reduced the opacity. Then I added some sound effects to go with the animation. Then I duplicated my comp twice and made one 30 FPS and the other 60 FPS. This way I have two versions and I can upload based on the requirements of the platform. And that's it really, that's how I did this animation project. Now remember, all the project files for this are on my Gumroad linked in the description. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll be making more content like this in the future, so subscribe to the channel will be tremendous. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.